Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this beautiful event, and thank you, Filecoin Foundation, for the invite. So today, I would love to chat and talk about uh, data. What is data all about, and why AI is important? Uh, what the next stage um, for our company, uh, Ghost Drive, what we do? So my name is Roman, and I am the co-founder. And we've been working on this project for some time, for more than five years. And thanks to the Filecoin Foundation, we've been able to do a lot of speed up, how we can robust the data flow, how we can help and simplify how we can manage our data. So talking about data, for, for each of us, the data or, and information, it's have a, we have our own point of view. But in general, what is data and how we handle this data, it's still a lot of gray areas. So every day we create and upload to the internet over 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. So let's say next year we will have over 175 zettabyte generated, uploaded. But the issue is not about the data generation. It's all about the data management and data efficiency, the data compute, the data speed. Everything is all about the, the speed. But when you have to order to have the speed, you need to take the noise out of all the data. So normally the data what we generate or what we upload it doesn't have, you know, 90% of this data, it goes unused because it's been uncategorized, it's unstructured, uh, and in the same time, it's not secure. So the only way how we can implement, we need to take the, the different steps, how we can manage our data, how we can take the noise out. And data has become more than... Um, just data itself. It can be an asset or new gold or new treasury or new token, you, you name it. But the issue about this all information what we're uploading, uh, in a global data, it's 0.5%. It's actually data being analyzed. So all your data, what you're creating, what we're storing, it's require a lot of manual labor work. So you need to label, you need to tag, you need to mark, you, you have to send, you need to do permission. And it requires so much stuff to do, but we don't have time for it. So the Gojai platform is designed how we can simplify the process for the AI, how you can feed the data to train the model, how you can validate this data, and etc. Because why it's important in our day, um, everything it speed ups, everything what we used to have like two years ago is completely different than now. Everything it's changed, everything been shifting through the internet scale, especially when OpenAI bring the chat GPT era, you know, the internet internet being changed from all that time. You know, and the question is what is the next step? What is human data? You know, our memory data, our brain data, or our um, ideas. Everything, it's storing somewhere. You know, we need to put somewhere. Or some people even don't care. You know, the 30% of the internet users, they never back up their files or their phone. So a lot of data, what we have, it's off grid, off internet. And for us to take this next step and build this different narrative of this ghost drive, which you can try, on uh, our uh, Telegram app as well. Um, it's two completely different steps. So what we try to mix and what we try to accomplish is how we can bring decentralization, intelligence into one platform. You know, how you can make sure whatever data you upload is automatically 
uh, doing labeling. It's automatically uh, trying to see the um, the meaning of this. Of this data can validate a different data. You know. So this is what we've been working uh, lately, and I would love to talk about uh, the Ghost Drive AI part. So the Ghost Drive. It's built on top of the file coin as a layer two. And what Ghost Drive do, it's manage, properly manage your, your data, your files, uh, sharing management as well. Um, inside also of Ghost Drive, the users able to also generate the um, images, the content, do the data labeling on the fly. And it's not about only the data storage here. So it's all about the data transformation because the data has also ability to move. The data has ability to become a value once it goes to the specific data flow uh, process. And um, inside of the Ghost Drive, so we start this campaign in uh, July. And from the July till now, we got 1.8 million users. And we've been able to save them up to 70% of data storage. The, the, the reason why and everything what we do, we've been trying to build and implement client-side um, compute and client-side encryption, which my team going to talk in a few minutes. But uh, we did a one uh, use case. So for our community, we have a community on our chat. Um, and we build our own AI, which manage all our community, which sending us report every day, telling what people looking for, what they need. So we've been implementing the AI for the last um, maybe two years. And we've been doing a lot of R&D, how AI can truly help for the data management and um, data value. So the main thing what Ghost Drive is offering and what is bringing to the, to the table is how you organize your files, right? Because it's very important not only to have your data, but it's very impo more important how you how your data is organized, how your data been labeled. Because that way your data can move much faster. The second part of what we've been focusing is encryption. So we've been thinking how we can do everything on a client encryption side. So the user have a data ownership. The user have a data of uh, control of their own data. And the third part is how this data can be smarter. So that why the Ghost Drive AI, what we're trying to um, introduce you guys, what is helping, it's helping you also do the data monetization. So you can monetize your data through the pay-per-view on Telegram or through the tokenization process. We uh, support also um, a different uh, blockchains like Ethereum, uh, Filecoin, uh, Binance, Polygon, and others. So any of these chains are um, already built inside of Ghost Drive, so people can, with one click, do the data integration. And um, the next big thing, you know, what we've been dealing as a society globally, you know, we have so much raw data. Everything is raw. Everything, what you take the picture or you take the video or on your phone, it's still considered as the raw data because you need to have a, analytic tools or AI or some kind of plot platform or you can go to ChatGPT or different, a different kind of um, website which already providing this kind of service. But for us, we took a little bit step back and we took a little bit more time, you know, how and what we can do with the raw data. So inside of Ghost Drive mobile app, every file what you're uploading, it's automatically compute. So utilizing your phone power. So we utilizing the user phone as a node inside of our system, of our network. And these raw files, it's automatically changing into the smart file. What I mean by that, so we take more than 70 or 90% of noise of your data. So let, let's say your file it's four megabyte when you take the picture on your iPhone or Android. But when you upload this file to the Ghost Drive, 
the file size is going to be around 300 kilobytes. So it's going to be 70 or 90% much more lighter. So what that means, you can share this file much faster. The second step, what we do, we trying to do the data analysis from the file itself. So it's automatically going to do the data labeling, make sure this file can be applied for your next project, or it's going to be much easier to search, it's going to be more organized, and also if you want to monetize, it's going to be also much, much easier. So from raw to smart data, it's very important transaction what we've uh, been doing as a Ghost Drive team. And uh, we have a lot of uh, success on that, and we've been testing this product and our um, uh, mobile app over a million users. So, and we've been collecting a lot of different use cases, how and why people need it, what people are looking for. And what we discovered that uh, people not care about, not care, used to care about privacy like two years ago, three years ago, like today, the, um, the more people concerned about their data control, who owns your data, which company holding your data, right? And uh, Ghost Drive, we all about how we can give power back to the users, so the users are able to engage more, they can create more. And uh, our next big thing, what we've been developing is, imagine all your files, all your data, your memory, your notes, everything what you have on your phone or your computer, you can put in a one space. And that space, and from your data, can create your personalized AI assistant, coach, whatever. So other ways, um, it's like your data have a voice now in our platform. Your data can interact with different profile or different data on the fly. And um, like my team is here, Artem, Yuri, Dennis, and we have more people there too. So we will talk about a little bit more how we've been helping and how we bring the AI to this ecosystem, and especially with the Filecoin um, Foundation and um, We've been, we've been getting a lot of help, especially from uh, Paul Wagner, who is going to be in the stage two with us sp speaking, we are, where we're going to touch more about all this stuff. But I would love to welcome uh, my team as well, Andrew Morashkin, our CTO. So uh, welcome to the stage. Hello, audience. Um, I have a couple of more technical slides, but first I would like to remind you to scan the QR code and join our Telegram mini app. The earlier you do it, the faster you will gain points and the higher chance you will have 100 GB of free data storage. Okay, so my first slide is about privacy on Ghost Drive. We would like to bring the approach, not your key, not your Bitcoin to the file storage. So uh, Ghost Drive platform allows you to encrypt your data in your browser with your crypto wallet. And we are not able to scan your data or harvest your data unless you give us a permission. Uh, this is implemented in our encryption and key exchange protocol. Additionally, thanks to uh, tamper-proof IPFS gateway, which is included in uh, every storage provider, Filecoin storage provider, uh, user gets the content which, uh, in the car format, which is uh, like 100% tamper-proof. And And additionally, we're trying to provide users with the experience, which is like supposed to be same, same, uh, seamless as a Web2 file storage experience. But on the background of it, uh, we have like a set of different technologies to make Web3 experience as smooth as normal Web2 experience. So, for example, you can upload your videos to Ghost Drive and any other media like audios and 
client side encrypt them and still have the same experience like you watch in YouTube. Uh, but your decrypted data never goes to our servers. This is the typical flow of the data. It's simplified. So user uh, select the file and then the file uh, chunked on the, his mobile phone or web browser. Uh, each chunk encrypted and upload to our ghost drive gateway uh, where we prepare in file coin sectors. Once we prepare the file coin, uh, a data for file coin sector, which is around 32 gigs, uh, we push it all together to the storage provider. And the user consumes his data directly from the storage provider or a CDN if the file is need to be like mass consumed and the delivery has to be scaled. That is it from my side. Please scan the QR code, please earn points. And now I'd like to invite uh, to the stage our Filecoin advisor, which helped us a lot with the integration, who helped us a lot with integration, Paul Wagner. Thank you, Andre, for the warm welcome. Thank you to the audience, uh, those that are tuning in, uh, potentially on the live stream, the recording. Thank you again, Roma, for going through things. We're gonna probably dive a little bit deeper on both some of the technical stuff uh, maybe maybe after we cover the the broader base questions that I think that are very important to, you know how you actually I actually want to jump a little bit back into the story of how you got into uh, ghost drive because I think we've talked about this although it's been a little while so maybe the highlight in the refresh as to when you started which at this point is a multi-year journey so Take it from the top. Yeah, so the Ghost Drive idea was born in 2017 in California. So, um, but, you're, but, but you're not from California. Where are you from, actually? I'm, to... I'm born in Ukraine, but I grew up in California. So I moved to the United States in 2002. And then I've been exploring the... Um, the data storage, data centers, the data cloud, so it's become my thing. And then I fall in love with uh, Bitcoin, crypto, and decentralization piece. So I saw the big potential um, for the industry. So, and the Ghost Drive um, goal in that time, what we was trying to build, it's, it's efficiency, speed, because the, the crypto, it's all good, but the, the speed and efficiency is not there yet. So this is what we've been trying to solve, how we can speed up, how we can encrypt, how we can build stuff on the client instead of the server. Um, and then a um, friend of mine introduced me to Andrew, so we know each other for more than six years. So he being our uh, technical lead CTO for many years. And uh, we built this team about maybe 30 developers so we've been d developing since last like four years, and of course two years is Filecoin. Uh, so it's been like very, very cool journey. Why, why don't we actually hear your story as well? Because we've talked about, I mean, you've been in the blockchain space for quite a while as well, but how have you seen, we'll call it decentralized storage be integrated into your view of how blockchains should utilize it? Because you have a very, broad uh, level of skill, especially both from the development and also the you know, CTO side of things of architecting developers in the right direction? Mm, I'm watching on this like uh, utility layer, which actually just simply allow us to bring value to our users. So I'm not like goal oriented in decentralized of data storage, but the advantage it gives is what I want. And the advantage is uh, more privacy, cheaper competitive prices, that's it. People care about price. We've talked about this before, which we might circle back to. Um, we do have to plug one more time. Please start the QR code download because they are um, offering some rewards just explicitly for the people in the audience and the people on the recording. Uh, that I believe this expires at some point. So get your oh, 100 gigabytes, which is quite a bit of data. I think that's about 
5x that that Google Drive is offering. So I want to circle back to a number that was up on the slide before, which you said starting back in July, you started a, a long campaign, so we're about five months into that, of accumulating users via Telegram, which is a, a mainstream platform now for user acquisition. What have you seen on the the geographic distribution of Ghost Drive. I've seen a map at, at one point and we saw some hot spots in certain countries and regions. Where are you seeing the user base continue to be active in this case across the globe? So it's funny because it start, uh, when we started this campaign, um, it's pick up very quickly in Africa, in South Africa. And now it's US, it's number one who is dominating. Um, the way how we build this campaign, it's not like a direct marketing, so we gamify this element and we say, hey, if you want to have more storage, you can come, you can play, and for each step, we're going to give you one kilobyte. So people start love this game and we build this beautiful spaceship so you guys can test it on our uh, QR code which is there. Uh, and people start sharing. So right now we approach to 1.8 million users, so hopefully we can reach 100 million in next year or so. And uh, I think that's where the, the problems we've seen also on the scaling. In your experience with traditional, we'll call it CDNs, and maybe some people in the audience don't know what a CDN is, but geographic distribution of assets in this case being images, videos, closer to the user, how do you see leveraging blockchain technology, these deep in networks, and specifically some of the ones that are both begin with Filecoin and are adjacent to Filecoin in our ecosystem? We're just going to utilize, utilize solutions like Titan Network. And that's and it. Do you see that there's a, a cost savings there that is not available in the traditional CDNs, or do you see it in, like we've looked at these maps of if we just need a node in, say, San Diego, California, where Roma used to live, it's much easier to get those with these deep in networks that might be at a smaller scale, but offering that one amazing surfing video for the surfing competition that might be going on that Ghost Drive is sharing, just an extreme example. Right, right. Uh, the, maybe the selection is smaller now, but I believe it will grow as the network grows and usage grows. And additionally, uh, it allows to use some tools which traditional CDN doesn't allow to use, which we also need for our tamper-proof data assets. Tamper-proof data, okay. So I have to ask, I know we've talked about this. Um, in this data as an asset class that we're talking about, and we, I wanna make my data work for me in the Ghost Drive platform, um, there's the ownership portion, right, where I own the encryption keys, right? And we've talked about in the past, like definitely back up your keys always, maybe give multiple copies to family members and then um, certainly to people you trust. But there's the monetization aspect. How are you approaching this uh, now versus in the past? Because we've worked on some of the different tokens that you could monetize with, but where are you seeing the, the current snapshot and the future of monetization, given all of the transaction costs on many of these chains is now near zero, especially some of the, um, you know, well, just Solana is an example where I think the transaction costs are near free at this point. Right, so previously in the past, right, those monetization platforms, they have to store your content unencrypted to allow all these monetization tools. Uh, we currently, with our key exchange protocol, we can allow you to sell uh, access to your file via blockchain, we are tokenized ticket to assess the file as NFT, uh, while providing the key exchange in an encrypted format between you and new buyers people who bought the NFT or people you shared the file via link, whatever. And the next step is we would like to eliminate our servers from the key exchange process. So what we would like to do is to create our like layer two blockchain for several, several tasks, including the key exchange process. So the data monetization would uh, 
work on its own. Well, r related to that, maybe I know that we had spoken about this prior that I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm not going to bring it up with, with Andre. I'm going to bring it up with Roma because we've talked about this multiple times. Is Indexing is a very, very difficult problem wherein if my file on Ghost Drive in its current form, because everyone is limited to this, although there are some advancements uh, out there in startups trying to solve this problem, but this indexing portion at this point is held with the application layer. And we've talked about you know, your, your vision and just say how you think this should form and shape because it is evolving, this global indexing at a public and permissionless level, but it's a very difficult problem to solve. Yeah, because it requires so much computing power, you know, to do the data, even labeling data, um, uh, categorization, it requires the edge in compute. So uh, that's why in GhostDrive, what we trying to bring to the table is uh, our nodes, which will play the big role in the computing, uh, in the data indexing itself in the future. So uh, the, the notes we're trying to launch probably by March, like physical notes, uh, so the people will be able to participate and help us to do the uh, data labeling and data indexing. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it's important to do the data indexing. And thanks to the AI tools, now it's much easier. You can create a new uh, data flow for your data, so you upload the file, then AI can automatically do the summary of the file or reporting or label or what it is inside of this file. So that means your data become much more uh, searchable than used to be before. So the indexing, it's not only the index this file, but it's like how your, you can use this file from that index to build a new file, right? So it can have a, like a ping pong effect. So you indexing in one part, but in second part you can activate, um, like two data can generate a new file or two or hundred files can generate a new image or anything. So the da data indexing layer, it's much more easier, I think in the future to create this kind of decentralized approach of indexing you know, in order to generate the new information. Because yeah, it's all about, comes to the data generation, you know, less than data storage, I think, so. I think that that's also where you've been very successful. There are, I, it's not worth making broad-based comparisons, but your application, because I've seen everything all, all the way from the front end, all the way down to the back end, is one of the most blockchain native applications I've ever seen in that if you start looking at some of the startups in the ecosystem of blockchain technology, they tend to be leveraging AWS or GCP because they were given credits and they are stuck in that cycle. Um, not always their own fault, they just, the, the VCs in this case may have locked them in and it's just easier. Um, I know when we've looked at your infrastructure, it's very lightweight. Um, most of it, as you've said, is client side based, which Occasionally, sometimes when I'm uploading a lot of files on my um, iPhone, it gets really hot, but you know, you've got a, <laughs> the, the encryption there, I understand, and then the compute portion to take a, whatever, we'll call it a 100 uh, megabyte MOV file down to WebP or whatever format is, is on the compression side. But it's, it's quite impressive, actually, what's, what you're able to do. And then this, the performance of your end device is just extremely high, and you're leveraging that. But where actually did that, call it idea come from because most of the world is just bent on um, a client server model where you just push everything heavy to the server and just let big computers do the hard heavy lifting. The, the idea is come, came from the limitation because since we want to offer users their privacy, we have to move like compute to the user side. Simple as that. And it's just gotten cheaper over time, thankfully, right? Cheaper for us. Cheaper and, and, and then cheaper for our users. Which is a fair point, right? It limits your infrastructure footprint there. Ghost Drive is not stuck in this AWS or GCP or Huawei Cloud um, bill hype cycle where it started at 10K a month and now it's at 100 and there's almost no way to get out of it at some point. It's the lock-in. 
Yeah. So we try to design something new, um, and uh, me and Andrew, we love client um, technology more than server technology, because to put everything on the server, it's easy on the beginning, but when you have uh, over one million users, you understand the pain, how much it's cost, right? So, and the, that pain feels, I think, everyone who dealing with any sort of data, heavy data, uh, media data, anything. It's because it's, you have at least two, three terabytes maybe on your phone. Some people, 100 gigabytes. So, but in a global scale, if you're trying to compute all this data, it will cost trillions of dollars. So with the Ghost Drive app, it doesn't cost you nothing, you know? And the storage, what we offer, is only 3.99 per one terabyte. And whole computing and encryption, it's only happening on your phone. So we don't send this data to the server and then take the chunk. So everything is happening on our mobile app. And we planning to release our desktop app as well, so people can do the whole backup of your Mac or Windows as well. And in the current form, if you were to uh, go to the Telegram app, in a lot of respects, it's the mostly full feature set, but in, in some respects, it's call it 80%. And then you do need to download the app to get the full feature set. But, but it is quite impressive what you're able to do inside of Telegram. It's an amazing uh, ecosystem to get people hooked. But, you know, if you're, you're downloading the app now or you using it and you want to share some files, uh, the best thing to do is then go to the App Store and, and download the app. Or you can also engage with the uh, Ghost Drive AI bot, correct, which is also active on Telegram. Yeah, so uh, we have Artem there, so he's been helping us with, uh, with that piece, and he can probably can answer that better, but the whole AI aspect, so we build AI mascot, you know, so this is our AI admin, which connect to all our communities, and this AI pick up and analyze everything what people are saying about Gojrek. You know, it's, in, it's incredible. It's give you a daily report, say, hey, this is a concern, and this is a suggestion, and this is a key phrase is what people are using, and this is what people are looking for. So it's give us a lot of insight what we need to do the product. Because once we start the product, it's, we have a different view, right? Completely different view. So when we put the product on the market, we got the market view, and we got the market needs. So now we're more focusing what people are looking for, and number one, it's pricing. Uh, number two, um, it's privacy. And uh, number, num number three, it's AI. So I hope the AI will become number one soon. So uh, we're we planning to release the Ghost Drive AI in uh, December, like 21st of December. Uh, so it's going to be much more easier to manage and organize all your files inside of the Telegram. In, well. Inside of Telegram, from the AI side, because we've we've done some work uh, together with a, a friend, um, very good friend, Evo. From from day one, I think because of him, we were very very smart about knowing the importance of AI safety because we don't need an application generating obnoxious images that you know don't fit some you know mold or criteria. But how have you taken that approach? Because I know the leverage at this. Yeah, at this point is many open source models. You also have one of your own cl closed source models. But how are you approaching AI safety on the platform? So we have our own um, safety dashboard where we can mark and validate. So we, it's like a data labeling. So you can test your AI model with the toxic questions and then you getting the response, and for each response you need to mark it, how, how good it is, or it's abusive or not. So it's a long process, honestly. It's an build. expensive process as and well. And it's an expensive process as well. So we've been doing the safety more for about maybe a year, just to polish all that stuff. And um, the way how we approach, we build a multi-multi-model. So it's not a one model involved. So it's a have a multiple models uh, and they all synchronize connected. It's like a routing uh, mechanism. So and each AI can do particular work. So uh, the safety it's our I will say like a third probably application layer where you can make sure that AI doesn't gonna get too delusional. 
right? Because AI can be very delusional. It can create, it can uh, make some fake news or whatever. So, and you need to polish, you need to transform, you need to give more data, feed data, and then based on this, you will be able to have a much more better result when it comes to safety. Well, related to that, what, what I've seen in testing it, and I also have just followed some of the um, chatter and some of the admin portion of it, is that it's been very useful for user acquisition as well, right? When people have a question about the reward structure that you might be offering, when they might earn their rewards, when they can convert those rewards to a node, or and or how, where and where to back up their keys within the application. So one of you can answer the question about the customer support angle of the, the Ghost Drive AI, because your application does have an enormous amount of features, right? I mean, we've, we've talked about this a lot, that Ghost Drive has a lot of features. Sometimes you might need a little bit of training, but talk about how the AI agent in this case has helped cut down on a, a human having to reply back, how do I geolock a file? How do I back up my keys? If I've lost my password, what to do? So we um, designed the whole um, FAQ uh, list, and anyone inside of Telegram app, they can talk to our AI inside of Telegram. So we just open Ghost Drive app, and you can ask question. They can do that right now, yes. right? If they scan and the code, there's a hook for the actual um, AI yes. agent. Yes, and even you upload the image of your Telegram, the AI will give you the data labeling. It's like a summary of this file. What this file come, what this has inside. So you don't need to write it by yourself. So we have this uh, feature as well. And, um, and we love this because we, our customer support is only one, one, one man and AI, honestly. And Andrew, want to add something? Yeah, you've been asking how it helped us to cut the cost we have nothing to compare with because we started like this, one man and AI. That, that's a, a really interesting point. There never was a customer workflow or customer success workflow to replace, right? The, the heavy lifting is still the data labeling from the AI safety side, right? And, and of course, the, the um, blockchain engineers that you have to hire for all these multiple chains. And there, there's a little bit of piece I want to wrap back to, which was the Filecoin integration, you know, why we're here. Um, also, you know, in a lot of respects, like, where do you see the future of uh, Filecoin in your use case? And how, you know, maybe in some respects you, you want to shape the development of it because there are some people on uh, the live stream and in the audience that work within the ecosystem to develop products or offerings for what you may need. So, I mean, in t over time, you're going to need additional features that may need to be prioritized or at least brought up to the Filecoin uh, community for development. So, probably like a week or two ago, uh, someone on Filecoin already fixed those nodes to provide historical data, which will be very helpful for us. And we're actually going to just utilize Filecoin in a very normal way, create more deals with more storage providers. And then the blockchain aspect, uh, which is comfortable use for developers, which I mentioned a minute ago, which is already done. That makes me happy. And uh, bridges integration with other blockchains. Uh, for our tokens, NFT access, tickets, whatever. The, the bridge in this case being the assets that I may own inside of the platform being able to be monetized on multiple blockchains. Right, well, what, what we have on our roadmap is uh, being able to convert your assets from blockchain to blockchain, including Filecoin blockchain and other blockchains. Is there somewhat of a push to just have a one-click button publish on the top five chains? Is that a, I, it's always seemingly very hard for me to understand which of these blockchains will be around. So if you hedge your bet and publish the contract on five of them, is that the solution? Kinda, kinda. Publi publish the contract and then allow like nice and smooth transition for users. Uh, being able to send a ton asset to a Filecoin blockchain user, Filecoin asset to 
whatever other blockchain. And from this is something we talked about early on is you've got multiple login options, right? Um, but the two main wallets currently are MetaMask and the Ton wallet, correct? Where do you see your user base coming from? Do you have data on that or do you not know who's using what? And which one is basically more prevalent? I think, um, so we have a four different methods. So um, Apple ID, uh, the Google ID, MetaMask, and Telegram. So we have the most people um, using its Telegram uh, as application because we've been very successful on the Telegram campaign. So maybe this is a factor, but when it comes to the data analytics, so I think a lot of people still ut utilizing Web2 access. And when they logging as a user with a Web2 access, so then we give them ability to add a, a wallet address in case if they want to manage their the private keys. So they have to add the wallet anyway. So this is an educational curve what we do into our uh, customers. We even give them more storage reward if they add the, the wallet. Uh, to have incentive layers so they kind of start understanding how the privacy works because mostly people have no idea what is the different, you know, they, they just see the device or they see the application, they don't see the, the back end or what is truly happening to the ownership of this data, right? So that's why for us it's important to do the educational curve and uh, by the getting the the traffic from our mobile app, we can see what people like to use, and then we're trying to make a better experience from that. But I will say for now, uh, probably the Web2 login is much more friendly for people because they kind of understand how this works. And then it takes them a couple of days you know, to, to get the wallet. But mostly, I will say, like hundred, like not hundred, but um, probably around sixty to seventy percent people are adding their wallet. If they don't even know how to add, we we provide them instruction. Uh, that's why it's good to have AI inside of tele in our app because people can ask any question. So uh, then they will get the support. They can even upload the screenshot, and our AI inside can tell you what kind of issue you have and what you need to do to 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 solve it. To unblock them, yeah. right? Which is very important for customer onboarding. Our timer is coming down. I, I want to ask the audience now, so then we can circle back to the closing. If there's any questions, I think we have time for two questions. If anyone has any questions in the audience, you can come up. Um, if not, uh, going once, raise your hand if you have a question. I guess we can't really do these online, but that's okay. Great. So perfect. We have a fair amount of time. So. Where to find Ghost Drive? I think that's another reason why we're all here. So you can scan um, the QR code, ghostdrive.com, correct? Um, what other channels are you active on just in case people want to follow you or Twitter? I believe there was also a fair amount of Instagram and TikTok at some point, but at some point you need to narrow. Okay, so QR code live, download there, available on both the App Store, the Play Store, Coming soon is the desktop app, which is something we talked about for when I need to upload a terabyte, it's going to have to come from the desktop app. What, what does that look like, at least from the, the roadmap and timeline? Because that there's a lot of these heavyweight data assets that currently are blocked. You know, to, to, to build it, it's a, uh, probably not going to take too much, but to test it, it's, it's a different type of challenge you have. So uh, we already have a couple um, demos and MVPs what we've been working through this uh, desktop application, but I believe by March we should have a first release so people can do the backup, the old, old the computer. Uh, inside of Ghost Drive mobile app, now you can we fully support a backup. So you just can click the sync your iPhone or Android and our application automatically going to sync all your files, compute them, structure them, organize them. So the desktop is probably by March. So we got a one-click backup. Perfect. And how, how will the, I guess, in the, the node sale um, architecture that you have in place for the future nodes tie into this? 
And then how can people participate in the, the node sale? Yeah, so the, the node sale, it's to help the, uh, our computing edge, right? So once we're going to launch the desktop application, so we're going to require more help from the community, so users can run uh, physical nodes, and we're going to provide and publish all the um, uh, news and instruction how you can run the physical nodes in our infrastructure. Perfect. Closing notes here, Andre? That's it. That's it. All right. Uh, that's it. That's a wrap here. Once again, scan, download, earn. There's a, a fair amount of you know, tap to earn points left, but they are running out because there's 1.8 million people <laughs> tapping. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.